Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to Long Island Backstory. We normally fill at the, uh, film at the Cablevision Altice Studios, uh, which is in Hopog, and part of their deal to having their quasi-exclusive or their duopoly uh, with Verizon is that they need to supply, uh, I guess the contract that was done, that they're supposed to supply a studio. They give the channel, and they're supposed to have a studio that we can use free of charge, so this way there's like an alternative news out there. But because of the COVID-19, they're using this as an excuse to save money, of course, nobody cut their cable bills, right? They should be cutting the cable bills because they're saving on the studio, but they're not doing that. They get to lay off people. Um, it's really a, a bunch of nonsense that, that it's got to do with uh, Corona because we have one person who sits outside the studio and we would all be in the studio. So anyway, thanks to uh, Phil Giacino in Lake Grove, we're using his studio uh, temporarily until they open up, which I'm assuming is gonna be next year. Uh, my guest today has been on the show a few times is a, a good friend of mine, friend of, uh, a friend of the show, a friend of Americans for Legal Reform, and I think he should be a friend of all of our taxpayers here on Long Island because he is really I don't want to say he's the only voice because there may be somebody else out there that I'm missing Anthony okay so there, there is some other people but he is the, the number one I'll say the loudest voice yes. of the people out there and Rob's not afraid to speak out and really be our voice he's I guess our watchdog we need somebody watching and we're just we're so busy with all the crap going on and paying our bills and uh, now we have to deal with with COVID and businesses shutting down but Rob hasn't stopped and he's been just a huge advocate for us. Uh, I don't know if it's made a difference. I'll ask him. But at least he's out there speaking out. So Rob is the uh, county legislator from the 13th Legislative District. Uh, his office is in Smithtown. He's got Smithtown, Kings Park, uh, Comac, I guess. Fort Salonga, East Northport, Nessaquag, Head of the Harbor. So even, but even though those are his areas, Rob represents, and I heard you say it on one of your lives, you represent all the taxpayers in Suffolk County. You don't just look at it like it's your district. And you are, again, one of these politicians, and I'm going to let you speak in a minute. But I, I really want to give you credit because you're one of the politicians that doesn't say, well, they're not in my district. I'm not going to help them. Another one is uh, Congressman Zeldin, where I've gone to him for people outside his district. Mm -hmm. And he's never even asked me where they are. He said, matter. he said, nope, I'll help them, especially veterans. And unfortunately for you, I have your cell phone. So I've gone to you many times with people, not only not in your district, but not even in your county. county you're right. and, yeah. and just recently we had a, per, a homeless situation where you helped the person. So I, I really, Rob is what I believe politicians should be, you know, representing the people. And he, he never says no and does whatever he can to help anybody out there. So Rob, thank you for, for everything that you've done. Thank you for your service as a policeman and no, no now problem. you could just go away as you said many times and collect a wonderful pension from the police department yes. and not get aggravated <laughs> with politics it uh it's it, you know i didn't i sort of I, won't, I got forced into this in some way i mean we had a corrupt police chief a corrupt district attorney and i basically there was three of us assigned to the fbi today one unfortunately is dead one got arrested and one became a legislator. We all <laughs> lost some right. less than others. Right, you know? right. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to put that in our past, but, you know, I've always, having been in the FBI for 10 years, you don't lie. I mean, you tell the truth and everything's straight on the up and up. And then when I got into politics, it's all a lie. Everything. Basically, everything is a lie. And nobody cares either. That is the biggest thing I'm having a problem with is that the people who are listening to this and the people out there in the mall shopping and everywhere, they don't, they don't care. They don't know. I think they don't know. I mean, I, I, and I think they care, but they just don't know. I, I think the best example is if you talk, if you stop anybody on the street, Rob, in the mall, or, or, and you walked and said, what do you think about the red light camera program? Everybody would say, that's the worst program in the, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And then they voted in the people who did it. Who yeah. put it in yeah. again? Well, I think supposedly eight out of ten people can't name the county executive. Right. If you just walked in the mall and asked sort of people. Yeah. You know, and this is the the, the funny thing about um, an election. Eighty six percent of the registered voters in my district did not vote for me, and I won by a landslide. How right. is that possible? Right. Because eighty percent didn't vote at all. Right. Right. So out of the twenty percent, I got seventy percent. And, and as you said, if eighty percent don't know who the county executive, yeah. how many people know their county legislator? No. No. <laughs> so no it's probably five percent. Uh, so, and I'm guilty too. I didn't know until I got involved. And that's the reason why. We're the, one of the richest counties in the country, and 
we're absolutely dead last in fiscal stability. Last, number 62. The 62 counties, three years in a row, we are dead last. And can you imagine some of these counties upstate, how devastated well, they are, and this. we're below them? Think about this. There's a Democratic state controller who has to provide this list, right? He's a Democrat. So Suffolk County, three years in a row, comes in last. So what does he do? Gives us a 76. Doesn't sound bad. Sounds like we passed, right? Sounds like right. 76. Right, it's, it's over 65. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? The worst is 100. So we really got a 24. So unless you read the fine print, you think, oh, you passed. We're doing okay. Now, the county executive, he is a brilliant politician. Absolutely. Brilliant. Can't take that away from him. Because he got everyone, everyone sh shimshammed. Right. They, they think, oh, things are great. Things are great. fantastic. And corona caused everything. Right. Now, I'm going to go over a few facts. Okay. These facts I'm about to talk about are before corona occurred, before anybody heard of corona. Again, there were 62 counties. We are number 62. We had eight bond downgrades prior to corona during the time of greatest economic expansion. Eight bond downgrades. We're almost at junk brown. So just go, what does that mean to the average person? Okay, that's a good, good point. When we borrow money, it's if we're the AAA like Smithtown and Pat Vecchio has, has us at, had us at, now we're like, we pay more. We pay a lot more money to borrow money. But why do we need? Do we need to borrow money? Exactly. Let's I mean, if we're the richest person, why do we? Ex and during ex good times, we need to borrow. Exactly. <laughs> it was so bad that we had to make pension payments. So we borrowed. We didn't have the money. So we borrowed three hundred eighty-five million dollars from the pension fund. That's right? legal. Yes, it's legal. It, it reduces now. We're probably at the point now we're not allowed to borrow. Because is there a certain point that you don't, if you don't have enough money in it, then stop? Yes, there is a point, but we never got to that point. Okay, we got close, very close actually. We had to sell the H. Lee Dennison building, which appraised for twenty-three million. We needed seventy-three million, so they gave us seventy-three million because we're a government and we're paying back. And they know they're going to get paid. We're paying back one hundred eight million on a twenty-three million dollar bill. That we were, that the taxpayers paid for. My parents exactly. paid, paid for the Dennison exactly. building. And this is my favorite. And this should be, this is the greatest fraud of all time. Because when you think of Steve Ballone, but prior to Corona, what was the number one thing? Clean water. Right, clean but water. I'm gonna go, we're going to get cesspools. Uh, cesspool. So we have a fund that caught us in sales tax that had, essentially, I'm going to abbreviate this, a quarter of a billion dollars. $250 million. How many years did it take to get to that? At, um, probably over seven or eight years. Okay. Okay. So now, what does he do? Back in 2014, he needed money, so he put a referendum on the on the on the ballot, and people voted for it because it sounded great. It said we're going to borrow 30 million dollars, 20 for open space, 10 for clean water, and the last thing was tax stabilization. So let's go over this well, again. You throw tax stabilization in there. Who's not going to vote for that? Exactly. You know <laughs> what it was? It was raid the water fund, so I don't have to raise your taxes. Right. So we took 250 million dollars that we already paid. That we already that we have in cash, by right. the way, in cash. Took the $250 million, borrowed 20 for open space, and borrowed 10 for clean water. So now we're even bigger in debt. Right? Did, did he use that money to do anything with... Yeah, but don't worry. No, we can make, make payroll. That's all it was. But we none none of it was used for clean, for, no, for doing not, anything. not one dime. So now what happens is we're going to pay it back, though. So he says we're going to pay it back. 5% a year till 2029, and then in 2029... 2029, a, yes, when he's when gone. He's gone. He'll be in Florida. <laughs> it took my punchline away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so in 2029, he's going to pay it back. 5% a year up until 2029 with a balloon payment. Well, guess what? Corona hit. So what does he want to do? There's another $40 million in it. He wants to take the $40 million and put on the referendum saying we don't have to pay the money back. Ever. Ever. So, Mr. Clean Water, Mr. Oh, we're going to put cesspools The environmental people love him. It's bizarro. Right? Though, because he's a great politician and he's totally full of shit. He will look in your eyes and lie to you like no end. Because it's he's a good a, politician. He knows he can do it. They don't. No one questions him. Right. We say, come in front of the legislature. He never comes. He could never debate me. He would run off the stage and cry like a schoolgirl. Right. Because I have the facts. And I get, I get a lot of, oh, you're partisan. You're very partisan. I'm not partisan. I tell the truth. Right. I mean, there's a, there's a, a great quote. The truth is um, treason to politicians. I think it goes <laughs> something like that. It's, it's really true. true. If I tell the truth, which, which is what I just told you was the truth, he, he, what could he possibly say? Right. What could he possibly say? So he just say? ignores you. Now, let's talk about the reason why we got here. And this is, this is a great 
Pat Vecchio story. Pat Vecchio was the town supervisor. He passed away. Oh, Smith The cheapest guy you'd ever want to meet in the world. <laughs> So one of the, when I get elected, but before I take office, there's a police contract. Now I'm a former policeman. I want to give them everything we possibly can. The contract was a 28% pay increase over eight years, a huge amount of money with all kinds of great um, overtime. Quirk. It was a very, very expensive, expensive was that the deal? Was that the year they gave him a half a million dollars towards his campaign? Uh, yes. No, that was a little bit more back then, <laughs> but that was the next story. So now I bring it to Becky when he looks at it, and the first thing he says is, why did you retire? This is, you'll, this is, you'll be making $250,000 a year. And then the second thing he said, which is the most important thing, who gives an eight-year contract? Right. You don't know what's going to happen a year from now, two years from now. You never do more than a two-year contract because what if corona hits? What if a recession hits? What something if will hit. So, it's going it's to going happen. To who would do that? No business would do that. No, no one would give an eight-year contract. Without an out. Yes. To say if the sales tax drops, if the economy drops, exactly. you, that's it. No matter what we pay historically this. historically, it goes like this. Right. You can never stupidity. Right. So that, that contract expired a couple years ago. What did he do? Gave him a six-year contract. So now what happens? Corona hits. Now We're locked in. Locked in. Right. So what can you do? And as everyone knows, 95% of stuff is payroll. Right. So what can you do? So what is he going to do? I'm going to cut the buses. I'm going to cut $20 million from the police class. Okay, we're going to close the police academy. Well, guess what? When there's nobody in the police academy, it's essentially closed down. <laughs> you put the cops back on the street. Right. It's all show business and scare tactics. I think tomorrow he's doing one where we're cutting $20 million from health care. But what does he expect to get? Are they, does he want that, that, to entice the federal government? Well, to? Let's talk about that. We're down. Because why do that? Because these poor the, the buses are really the lower end people well, that's, anyway, we right? We spend the lower. about fifty-one million dollars out of our budget. It's a eighty-seven million dollar budget. Five. Uh, well, let's give you the numbers here. We collect about eight million dollars in fares a year from buses. Okay, it's okay. down for about. It's going to be about four million this year, so it's half. But the state gives us $28 million, and the county kicks in $51 million. So what's a great thing to cut with $51 million? Right. We can blame Corona and blame 50 Meanwhile, it's only down $4 million, but we're going to take right. the Right, more than the exactly. – I mean, worst case, you would say we're going to take the four. Yeah. Exactly. But it's it, not. So even, let's go back. Lee Zeldin got us $27 million well, guys, why don't we hear about why don't, I, I hear everybody talk. Why isn't this on the news that Zeldin got well, this money? He's, I think he's promoting a little bit. I don't hear him even saying it. You know, honestly, he's actually a humble guy. I mean, look, it came from the federal government, the president. But he got it. I mean, let's not be. You're, you're right. <laughs> he's close he's, with. He's the Congress I, I, with I, Trump. I, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't think uh, Cuomo walking up there yeah. is going <laughs> to so be as welcome. Let's talk about the whole picture. <coughs> not only got $27 million, he got total $283 million. This year? This year. CARES Act funding this year. How, no, I can't believe nobody but, knows about this. But we're only down about $105 million in sales tax. So let's do the math. Now, my wife teaches kindergarten, right? A kindergartner knows that $100 million is substantially less than $283 million. Right. But Steve Ballone is standing up saying that, oh, we have no money, we have no money. And guess what? We have no money because of the reasons I spoke to you before about. Because we're flat busted broke and we have contracts that they have to get to. So what is he trying to do? And I almost don't blame him for this. He's trying to cover up his mistakes by using the federal government's money. Right. Period. And the same. Th the governor is going to do the same thing. So now we have two hundred eighty. Um, we're down a hundred million dollars. So we have two hundred eighty-three million dollars. We have to you say come to us and show us what you're spending the money on. He's only spent about a hundred million dollars. Where's the rest of the money? What are you doing with it? What they're trying to do is double dip. They're trying to use FEMA money for some stuff, and at the end of the year, it has to be used by the end of the year. They're going to, and you know, pay for everything with it. But what I heard is, and I heard one of one of your uh, your Trotta talks on thing that they were talking about giving raises, and I was with a friend. Oh, they did. And he called up one. He called up his legislator, and said, "Why?" Actually, he posted on Facebook, and the guy messaged him, and he said, "Why would you be giving raises when everybody's cutting?" And you know what his answer was? You probably you probably know what it was. Well, it's not their fault. Okay. Well, it, it doesn't matter if it's their fault. This There's the, no money. Just, this because is, they were up for the money anyway. But who tell you don't think the person would understand? Listen, we have we, no money. We don't. We're not going to cut you. We're just not going to give you a raise exactly. this year. Maybe next year things will be great. He said it's not their fault. I'm voting for the raise. This is a Republican. Yeah. A Republican. Oh, a lot of Republicans <laughs> said. Oh, believe me, I was. Who's looking out for us? It. Nobody. Guess why? That union piles money on these politicians. Myself and Anthony Piccarello, legislator from the Sable area, are the only ones who have a policy. We do not take money from unions who have to vote on their contract. Now, 
If my brother-in-law got the contract to paint the bathroom in the H. Lee Dennison building, I would have to recuse myself from voting on that. But I could take a million dollars in super PAC money and in money to run my campaign. And then when their contract comes up, I get to vote on it. Now, I put a bill in. Since the day I got elected, I put this bill in right away when I saw this was going on. I said, you can take all the money you want from the unions, all the money you want. But when the contract comes up, you have to recuse yourself. You can't vote on it. There'll be nobody voting. Of course. <laughs> Guess what? The Democrats control every single committee. It never gets out of committee. Right. Never, ever gets out of committee. Look, half the Republicans hate me because I, I tell the truth. Right. I tell I, the I, truth. I, just want to say, I, was, I was watching one of Ballone's uh, Facebook videos, <laughs> and I see on the bottom, Rob Trotter. <laughs> I don't know if you said he's full of shit, but you said it in some other words. No, no. And I said, this guy, you know, you could... It, you're, you're calling him out on his own Facebook, but he, he I looked to see if he commented and said, no, you're lying, Rob, no. here's the truth. No, they no never, comment. They never, they will he never. Correct you. Go, this, Rob Trotty's is full of it. And, and, and they'll say, oh, why doesn't he give back his pension? They'll, right. they'll, they oh, listen, it's a total propaganda technique. If you don't have the facts, you attack the person. Right. right. If you can't attack what the person's saying, you just attack the person. And they don't have the facts. I mean, I can show you the state controller said we're the worst fiscal shape three years in a row. I didn't make that up. Right. I didn't say it. You just give them facts. I, I don't, I don't, we borrowed $385 million in the pension fund because we didn't have enough money. That's not, it's a fact. We stole $250 million from the clean water fund. I didn't make it up. It's on the back. It's on the ballot this but, November. But why are these, uh, I don't. I won't mention all their names because I'm not sure which, how recently. But I see people who are environmentalists standing behind Balone when he's doing his press conferences. Well, why, why? The first time she's on board, I think this time. But you don't see her. She's not advocating. It was uh, Adrian Esposito. Esposito. Right. Well, that's what I was. I think I remember seeing her I pulled, with Balone. You're right. I pulled the verbiage. She spoke in favor of raiding the fund, the clean water fund. Why? She was running for state senate at the time. Oh, Who gives the, her yeah. money? The Democrats. Who is blown? A Democrat. Right. It's totally corrupt. Totally, um, 100%. Um, unbelievable. Are, you, are you worried about your life? Because no. honestly, on Long Island, I mean, it's not an, over, an understatement. It's not an, an overstatement to say that. People, there's some crazy shit that goes uh, on on Long Island here. Bring you, it you don't on. think about it? Bring it on. That's because you're a cop, because you Let's probably go. got a gun sitting under your uh, <laughs> under your jacket right no. there. And I know you know how to use it, so we don't piss you off. So let's talk about this. I want to go back to these buses for a sec, because one of the things, we these numbers are huge for the buses, but I see them in Smithtown, because I have a bus stop on 347. Nobody in There's them. nobody ever. I have a beautiful bus stop that they rebuilt. I don't know who built it, but it's got a nice covered up thing yeah. with the solar light. Nobody's, nobody ever uses it. Yeah. I mean, I'm for buses if you need it. But why couldn't you do something where you call up this uh, a number and they send an Uber or a Lyft? The money goes directly to the to the per, to, to the Long Islanders, doesn't go to the unions. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to think, it's got to be 54 million. How many trips could you take You're right. for 54 million? million dollars? I mean, you could probably circle the globe. I think what would happen, their concern is everyone would be doing it. It, it would be... But even if they charge what you charge for the bus, I don't even, what does a bus fare cost on Long Island? And a couple of bucks. Right, so they say, oh, you do this, you get for $3, you get to go anywhere. I mean, it just seems like... You're, you're, you're 100% right. You know, and if it and was, it's better for the environment, probably, too. If it was true that the people who are using the bus now, I, I forgot that there was this, this, we did away with something in Southampton. It was like we, we were charging like $25, with, you know, cost to bring a guy two miles. Right. You know, it was like ridiculous. Right. So they did away with that bus uh, route. Apparently, I did, unbeknownst to me, is these routes really haven't been changed like in 30 years. Like I mean, I, by my office, like the beginning, there's no one there. Right. I take pictures all the time, nobody on the bus. But there are bus routes. I'm sure know. there's some that are needed yes. and some of the poor under. But, yes. But, it, you know, even if you just say, all right, well, we're going to cut the ones who have three riders on the, yeah. on a, it's not even good for the environment, well, the, though. The fun, my favorite one was, when they cut it last time, is he, Ballone, has the, he's, the, he's the best. He really is the best. <laughs> when he first got elected, we're going to put a monorail down Sunken Meadow Parkway. Right, right. So I always joke with the guys, hey, I don't see the monorail. I go to there every single day, seven years, nothing, <laughs> no construction, zero. Because he wanted to do the, uh, the north-south. Then he wants to do the north-south from um, Stony Brook University or on Concomit train station. Anybody tell him there's a train station in Stony Brook? Now, they're going to put a bus, a rapid bus transit there. What's the first bus route they cut? The Nichols Road one, <laughs> which was so I needed. Couldn't, you couldn't make it up. <laughs> it's like really. It's all, it, it really and, is. And, and I remember talking to Vecchio about this. He goes, 
buses work when there's high rises? What are you gonna get, get a guy walking through the neighborhood to the bus stop? It's not happening. It's ridiculous. Well, because even if, if you have like my bus stop on 340s, I'm in the corner of Place Today Avenue and 347. Know, Where uh, would anybody come from exactly to go to that bus? Yeah. If you if you pay in the taxes in my neighborhood yeah, of thirteen thousand yeah. dollars a year, you probably could afford an Uber yeah. or, or whatever. Or, I mean, it's, I don't even know where you would be going. To, who would nobody's ever? Where would there, you come from? There are routes, you know, in areas that don't. You know, and I poor. listen. I understand people. Yeah. Some people need a bus, but use Lyft and Uber or so, something. Instead of throwing money at, at 87, 50, 87, 87, 87 million. million. 87, yeah, with I everyone, mean, yeah. That, that's an insane amount of money. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine if you figure out how much per mile. Did anybody ever figure out how much per mile we spend no. for, for? It's got to be. Look, you probably wouldn't want to. This is them. one thing. There's a hundred of these. Right. A hundred of these we can go over. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah, want, we don't have money in DMV. They raise they, the fees. They, the wanted, courts, they the wanted to build a fingerprint lab. Now, I know a little bit of a fingerprint lab. Right. I was a cop, right? They wanted to build a $10 million fingerprint lab. Now, What's a fingerprint lab? They, it's the, um, well, they take, well, they, once you have a crime goes on, they take fingerprints right. and bring the stuff to the lab. Like you bring a gun or a piece of furniture. And they enter into a computer? And they, yeah, they, they, they photograph it. There's different ways of getting it out. Okay. They want, it's, we have one at headquarters. And they said it has to be an accredited lab. Now, I went, it's this federal, this federal task force put together, and the U.S. attorney said you have to have an accredited crime lab. So I read the whole thing. I watched the videos of this group together. They never mentioned the word fingerprint once. It was a crime lab. Forensics, guns, things like that. We have a crime lab in Hopper. It's totally accredited. Right. But guess what? That's they want to build something. Right. Because what do they do when they build something? They get right. campaign they get contributions. The plumbers and union, electric union, the carpenters union, well, the architects, I, and this and that. So what do you want to build? I laughed about it because they did, they did that with the uh, solar. They put all these solar panels over all the buildings, and I go by at night, and the lights are on. Like, where's the electric going? It's like it, it's a better one. It, it, they spent all this money, and then I, they, I don't we, even know if it's plumbed we, into the system. We made no money on that. We were supposed to get tons of money on that. You know what happened? Balone, they were supposed to do the Ronkonkoma Railroad Station, right? That was the last piece of the puzzle. Right. Balone said, no, we're going to develop that. We're not going to put the solar panels on. Even though there's a contract. Contract. He, void, he, he said, screw you, we're not doing it. Went to court, we lost. Guess how much we lost? More than what you made on the solar on the We don't get any money from it. We had to pay him $15 million. Oh, unbelievable. We had to borrow the $15 million to pay it. You can't make that up. No, it's true. And if that happened to a CEO? You'd be fired. Fired and Goodbye. sued. Now, I, know, I had phone calls from people inside the administration saying he was told not to do it. He was told, like emails, so I foil the emails. I get nothing. Right. It's totally incompetence, grossly incompetent. Now, my argument is, okay, even if you wanted to build that, Put the solar panels up because you know it takes 20 years to do anything permits this and that yeah. now here we are seven years eight years into it you could do both we could have, we could have said okay guess what are we done you know it was a 20-year contract we're up to 15 years how much to get out of 15 years we'll give you two million dollars or something right, right to buy out of the contract exactly. right right i wonder why do you, do you know why they did that i mean stupidity period just, plain just, and simple he wanted to build a stadium there okay. you know Another stadium. We need, we need, we need another, another stadium. Um, I just want to, because we only have a little bit left, I want to talk about the, uh, the closing down of, of Suffolk County, you know, the restaurants and all the problems, and also what's going to happen right now. I think there's still a moratorium on evictions. Um, yes. What's going to happen when all these evictions, we already have a, a rent problem on Long Island. Oh, I could do four hours on the IDA. You know, so we have that, that, we have that issue. I mean, rents are just, they're, now they're getting worse because from what I see, they're controlled by like a Fairfield. They're buying up all these Everything. properties and the rents are insane Hold up now. Court. Well, you got a couple minutes. So just, <laughs> I want to talk, what's going to happen when all these, <clears throat> when the moratorium is lifted and also the businesses, and, and you can't blame the, the landlords for saying, I got a victim because there's a lot of yes. people who may own a strip center. You know, we think of rich landlords, and of course there's some rich there landlords, is. but there's some who really don't have the money, and if their tenants are not paying and you can't evict them, they're going to be in a lot of trouble too. Is there, and there's no help for them. Nobody feels sorry I for them. I know a guy who rented a house to someone they paid for about um, two months, COVID hit. They both work and they just stopped paying. Right. Like every month, three, and he's got, guess what? He's got, <laughs> you know, rent, he's got mortgage payments. Right. He's, he's got, got his taxes, taxes on the building. So here he is losing, you know, three, $4,000 a month and there's a loan on the house. They're going to foreclose on his house because these people aren't paying and they're both working. Right. And he can't throw mm -hmm. them out. So what, what's going to happen? I mean, is it going to lift? Now, is this, this is controlled by the state? 
the yes, moratorium. Every, King Cuomo, he does, uh, there's nothing we can do. And what about the, the, the closures of the, and the restaurants and all the buildings, was that it? Cuomo. Was, that was every, all Cuomo? What happened was the legislature gave him basically, you know, the king. Right. Because we don't, well, in, in time of emergency, and a lot of times it's very important that you do that. You have to give the guy the ability to make decisions without going to the legislature. And they did, and it's probably going to keep going on like that. Wow, um, uh, unbelievable. So, uh, let's see, I want to make sure, I admit, what about PSEG? I, I, so you did something on PSEG yeah. after the last storm when we, 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 we well, contracted somebody in New Jersey well, now. Here's the now problem. Now it's supposed to be better, and we still have, I, I just, just really quickly, I have friends who come in from other countries, and I don't think about it, they're staying at my house, they're from Sweden, and they look around, and they go, I feel like I'm in Africa. I said, I said, well, I do have chickens, but that wasn't why. He goes, everywhere I go, there's old telephone wires hanging all over the place. There's no country civilized in the world that isn't burying no. their cables. I said, I don't even think we started on, uh, in Suffolk County. In new development. Like, my development, I, my, my, it was built in 1969, so it's 50 years old, 51 right. years old. 61. 51 years. 61 years. So, <laughs> um, buried cables. Okay. It was out for six days. Right. Because it's got to be unburied somewhere. And then right. what happens is they start to rot and the transformers underground blow up. It's well, like we're not upgrading stuff. our whole system. It seems like it's not being up. Whatever's there is there. Money. I mean, I see telephone poles. I mean, uh, Money. utility poles that are cracked. Yep. And they put another one next to it. They yep. strap it up. Yep. I mean, like you said, I, the richest place on, uh, and probably the, one of the richest places in the country. Managed, make no mistake. And, and even it. with this new PSEG, no, no, no better? The new management over there? No, I mean, look, the mistake they made during this last incident was they were telling people, oh, three days, it's going to be on. Stevie Wonder could have figured out that with the 15 poles lying in the middle of the street, the lights weren't going to be on. Right, right. It's right. crazy. And even the whole system crashed where they, yeah. where they were getting... Forget about that. The wrong information. I'm driving down the street going, there's no way they're going to fix this. Right. Not a chance in the world. I think it was by Thursday, then it was Friday, then it was Saturday. And it ended up being Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, and that I think that pisses off people even more. Yeah, when they, tell me, tell I'm me the truth, because then I make decisions based on Right, you may want to leave for a, a week. I want to throw get away generated. your food. Yes, you know, all, all bring that the food stuff. to someone else's house. Right, exactly. And I right. missed the hundred and fifty dollar thing that you could got. Free you didn't food. get for the freezer. You didn't get that. Why well, you missed it by? Uh, it, it was closed like September nineteenth. I forgot about uh, it. Nah, I don't have much for that beer and. Uh, what are you going to do? I, I don't know. Who kept the receipts anyway? Weren't you supposed to send you in your receipts? No, you didn't need the receipts for less than 100 Oh, less. Because I, th I thought it was up to 500 You could put in yeah, your receipts. Yeah, but you need the receipts. Who kept the receipts in, ho in uh, hopes that they're going to keep it up? Who has $500 worth of food? That's a lot oh, that's, of food. That's true, too. Rob, thanks so much for coming on. Thank, Thank you, you for, for More me. importantly, for being the uh, the voice of the people. And, and anybody who's watching, you know, whether you're Democrat, Republican, this really, doesn't really doesn't, the truth. doesn't matter. This, yeah, if you want to know the truth, ask me. Yeah, and, and watch uh, on your Facebook page. You, know, you start to do a little talks. more of the yeah. try to talk shows. I'm pick it up a little And bit. it's nice to hear, hear hear the truth from somebody who has the nerve to go out there and, and say it. And, you know, we were hoping that you were going to run for a, well, a I, higher office. If and, I may, I think I have an obligation because I'm from Smithtown. I get elected, you know, not as high as some of my colleagues. I have, I have an obligation to tell the truth. Right. And I love, like, the, I get, the one thing I get criticized about is on partisan politics. I'm not partisan. It's the truth. Right. Well, it's certainly not because you speak out against your, re, your Republican exactly. colleagues who don't do it. So I don't think anybody likes you at the party, no, at the no, uh, political parties. No, probably not. The people do, though. Yes, I, 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 do. I know the people in your area, your they constituents do. love you. And, they do. And you win, uh, you know, Family, overwhelmingly. Yeah. And so, so at least that's got to be some. If you uh, do the right thing, and I tell my colleagues, look. You have to vote. No. You, you got to say but no. But I think it's harder for the ones who are in a more contested area. And they're not willing because they're Those get, guys win by bigger than me. But their own parties will kick them out. No, nah, I won't kick them out. It's you the don't money. Think? It's the money. Yeah. It's the money. Well, we, then we need to take the money out of the legislature. So, I tried. So uh, people are doing it for the right reasons. I'm Gary Jacobs. Thank you for joining us on Long Island Backstory. If you'd like to get more information on Rob Trotter, go to his uh, Facebook page. Probably the best way, right, yeah. to uh, to reach him. And uh, if you like what you're seeing, please share it. The more people that see this, it's, I mean, it's all we can do is expose it. I mean, it's all you can do all is can talk do. about it and hope that... Uh, expose it and get them arrested. My two <laughs> favorite things. How, is that ever going to happen? Well, you're did, it, did already, right? Well, not everybody. There's some other ones. I'm Are they done? On it. No, not done. Never done. Not done. <laughs> All right, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, Rob. <laughs>
the oldest, most successful legal group in the world. P.O. Box 2679, Huntington Station, New York 11746. Telephone 631-421-6390. Website Americans, the number four, legalreform.com. I'm one on Monkey Guide. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning is 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash, 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Thank <laughs> you. 